So in closing, Mayor Bloomberg, you've told our students that they should party a lot, swim in the Connecticut. Toga, but, toga, 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 toga. <laughs> but um, let me let you redeem yourself by the, with this question. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, we talk a lot, and we've been talking a lot, about particular habits of the mind. You mentioned them, independence, innovation, persistence. What is your, the, one of the habits of your mind, so, so a, a persistent habit that you've uh, cultivated over the last uh, uh, years of your career that you think has been most important to you? And what direct advice would you give these students in terms of habits that they should, uh, they should cultivate? I went to Hopkins to study physics and it turned out there was a German requirement. So after 30 days, I became an engineer where there was no language requirement. Um, and I think looking back, uh, an engineering background was perhaps the transformative thing in my life because in science, and it would have worked if I stayed as a physicist too, I suppose, uh, in science you have to be able to look in a mirror and answer the question. You can't just say something and believe it. You have to be able to show people that you're right. Uh, the essence of science is that somebody else independently can verify what you claim you saw. And uh, that discipline of not just taking people's word for it or not just automatically falling into what's generally accepted has forced me to step back and say why and to question. And if you question why we're doing things, I think you'll find yourself targeting your energies much more efficiently, appropriately, and much more in a much more satisfying way. Uh, so if somebody says, well, this works, well, that may be, but you know, stop and think. Does it make any common sense to you? Listen to uh, what people are telling you to do. Think about what the, they say in the newspaper. Does it make any sense? Um, do you want to be part of it? Um, could you do it better? Uh, so it's that mental discipline of questioning, which I guess is the scientific method you could uh, uh, call it. There was a great story, uh, there's a great letter to the editor, I think it was the um, chairman's letter in the Smithsonian Magazine about five or six years ago, where the chairman of the Smithsonian wrote a letter saying he had a lot of friends uh, who had studied liberal arts who were proud of the fact that they knew nothing about science and bragged about it. But he had other friends who had graduate degrees in the sciences and they never bragged about their lack of knowledge of Shakespeare. Mm. And I've always thought that tells you uh, that the sciences force you in a ways to, uh, the, the discipline forces you in a ways to really reflect, to look at it and uh, make sure that you want to go in that direction and that you understand the implications of it. Uh, and I guess in addition to that, it's just not, it isn't not caring, it's just being confident enough in yourself that gets back to your question, uh, the guy that said, I take unpopular positions and nobody likes me for it. The question's not, do they like you for it? The question is, do you think it's right? It is great to be loved by everyone, but the thing that's most important is that you respect yourself. I'm not suggesting you go out and yell and scream at others and deliberately try to provoke. Sometimes discretion does make sense to not say things uh, because you don't want to hurt other people and you could respect their views or not respect their views, but they do have a right to their views. Uh, I'm getting tied up in uh, New York. There's a group that wants to build a mosque um, replace an old building two blocks from ground zero. And there are some people that think that uh, this should be prohibited and that we should investigate where the monies that they hope to raise will come from and uh, have some restrictions on what they can preach in the mosque. And I have said so many times, I'm getting tired of it, uh, not winning a lot of friends in doing so, but I just think it is the most outrageous thing that anybody could suggest. Here we have 9-11, uh, the actual site where some people 
felt that our freedoms to practice our religion were so abhorrent to them they were willing to take 3,000 people in their own lives. If there's any place that we should be proud to show the world that we are an open country and an open city, if somebody wants to practice their religion, whatever that religion is, they should have the right to do it. And I happen to think this is a very appropriate place for somebody who wants to build a mosque because it tells the world that uh, America and New York City, which is what I'm responsible for, uh, really believes in what we preach. We all say freedom of religion. Well, it's not just freedom of your religion, it's freedom of everybody's religion. And I don't think this country wants to go in a direction of questioning a lot of people that, a lot of people that didn't applaud if you'll notice um, I happen to feel very strongly that uh, those values that I was taught in civics 101 102 that my parents taught me uh, if you want freedoms you've got to give other people their freedoms and this is a perfect example of standing up and those people that died on 9/11 actually died so that we can, and the people I talked about going overseas and fighting and dying for us, they're doing that so that we can practice our religion. And if you care about religion, you should make sure that the government doesn't get involved in religion. Mayor Blumen, thank you so much.